but I never knew that from there that a business would pop out of it and I would be able to encourage other people that they're unstoppable and that they can do every single day. Hey, I've been through these things, but it says unstoppable because no matter what, I am unstoppable. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Total Michigan. I am your host, Cliff Duvinois. As usual, I run across these stories out there and I think to myself, I have to interview this person because their story is just too compelling. And for today's guest, I'm going to let him go ahead and introduce himself. But for ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Jamal Robbins, CEOs of Juniors Collectibles. Jamal, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I am doing awesome. Thank you for asking. So I know somebody in my audience right now just did a head snap. So why don't you tell us how old you are? I'm 13 years old. Okay. You're not like 13 and a half, almost 14. Almost 14. My birthday's in August. All right. Well, well, happy birthday. It's coming up here in just a couple of days. (laughs) Thanks. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what Junior Collectibles is? Okay. I basically started Junior Collectibles to encourage people through merchandise and motivate them to be the best versions of themselves. Okay. So when you say you want to motivate people, what do you mean by that? I want to motivate them to not only be the best versions of themselves, but to remember that they're unstoppable um, and that they can keep going even when it gets hard. So why is that important to you? Well, it's important to me because when I went through depression, people would always encourage me to be the best versions of myself. And so when I got out of it, then I wanted um, to encourage other people to, you know, just be the best versions of themselves. And so I want to I want to delve into this a little bit. But first, let's take a step back. What made you decide to become an entrepreneur in the first place? Well, it all started when I had to do a fundraiser for the Washington, D.C. trip for my school, SESA, because I didn't have like enough money because it was like two of us that had to go. So I had to do fundraisers for that um, because I didn't want to do the candy bars. So I just came up with these cups that have affirmations on the front and candy on the inside. So it says you're unstoppable or I am enough or just very like motivation, inspirational stuff on the front. And so then I sold those and it made people very, very happy. So I was like, man, I could do this like all of the time. So (laughs) that's why I started Genius Collectibles. A very, it's always nice when you have that feeling of satisfaction, like you're really touching people's lives. Yeah. That's the best part. (laughs) So you got your taste of being an entrepreneur. Now what I'd like to do is, if you're okay with it, you mentioned before about how you had gone through depression. Talk to us a little Mm -hmm. bit about that. The reason why I fell into depression was because uh, of the pandemic in March. They told us that we were going to be like going home for like two weeks and then coming back. But it ended up becoming three weeks and then it was seemed like it was going to be forever. And so I'm a very interactive person. I have to be in class learning and have that interaction with people. So I just broke down. It was very hard to like get out of that stage. But, you know, I did it and with the help of everybody else. So now I can just encourage other people to get out of that. So when you're going through this depression and you're coming out of it, what would you credit as that really helped you to start moving forward? My parents and my therapist. Okay. Was there any key piece of advice that you remember that they gave you that just really helped you out? To just really not, let's store it. So they basically told me that I could get through it, that I could do anything, that I'm unstoppable, which was one of the words right. um, that I put on my shirt. Um, so that unstoppable word really touched me. And so that's why I put it on the merchandise. So I think them telling me that I could do anything that I put my mind to really helped me. So at what point did you decide to marry your interest in entrepreneurship with your lessons that you learned from your depression? I combined it them based on the thought that I would be able to just go to like many different places at the vendor events and at the kids run events and all that stuff. I would just be able to go to those different places um, on my free time or just any time to encourage people. So I put those two ideas together because, hey, I can make money to start the special surprise that I'm going to say at the end. And I could also encourage people. Nice. Now, what made you decide to do merchandise? Well, I really love shirts, hoodies, and hats and stuff because I really love just shopping and clothes and all that stuff. So um, I did merchandise so that 
I could it's like something that I like, something that everybody can like wear on themselves to show other people because you know people go up to other people and it's like, hey, so what does this mean? What's the meaning of your shirt or what's on here? And then they can be like, hey, this young kid told me that this is unstoppable and what it means and all of that stuff and what it means to them and how I can encourage other people and now many of other people are being encouraged and hey, I want this shirt, I want this and now I can pour back into the community um, and the people that helped me. Oh, that's awesome. So I got to ask you this question. You decided to be an entrepreneur. You've got your own business up. You mm-hmm. are CEO. Yeah. <laughs> so what did your friends say to this? They were like, what? A CEO? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on here, man? How did this happen? <laughs> did they get behind you? Well, they were like, man, I'm your biggest supporter. Like, Now, when you came out with the merchandise and you're trying to come up, how do you come up with, because I don't know anything about design. I actually, I just, I go find people that know stuff about design. So how did you go about designing the logo, the unstoppable being on the shirt? How did you do, how did you do all that? I wanted it to be distressed. So that basically meaning that it went through like the shirt that I have on right now, it went through some things like it's been scarred, it's been pushed, it's been tested, but um, it's coming out. It came out of whatever it went through and that's what made it unstoppable because we never gave up and all that. So that's why I came up with the distress looked so that it basically lets people know, hey, no matter what you go through, you can still do it, man. Come on. Just pick your stuff back up, pick your stuff back up um, and just get back to it because you're unstoppable. I am loving this. So now the question I got for you is the reason why you and I were able to connect was because of Rhonda, mm-hmm. Alexia Webb. And for our audience, you can go back to episode 92 and listen to my interview with her. But she's got the program called Kids Rule Now, yeah. which you were in that program. Talk to us about your experience in that program. It was very cool. I think the first time I went was 2017. Oh, so, so you've been in it for a while. Yeah. Okay. I, and it was very cool. Of course, I was younger then, and I was like, wait a minute. these They're telling us like very important things because this one, the 2017 one and the previous one that I just went to, her last one, they were teaching us how to like work the cameras and do all that other stuff. And he was also teaching us about business, which is another reason why I wanted to start a business because I was like, hey, this is another another way that I can do it. And he told me, hey, you're really good at this stuff. So, you know, <laughs> might as well just do it so um, I can get the word out. And what would be some of the key lessons that you learned going through that program? To never give up. Like I've heard never give up and you can do it and you're not nervous. You're just excited. Hey, I love you. And they embrace me like with warm hugs. And it's just like a really cool atmosphere. So, yeah, um, I've heard a lot of those things. Keep going. You got this, you know. I love that. You're not nervous. You're excited. Yeah, that's what Miss Rhonda said. So tell us about the first time that you had a product to sell. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it was unstoppable or not, but you had a product to sell and you're all of a sudden now facing the public. You got people coming in. It's no longer theoretical. You mm-hmm. now have to actually get out there and try to sell something. So talk to us about that. Well, um, like I said, it started with the Washington, D.C. trip thing. Um, and so I went to the Freeland Market in the Midland area around, yeah, in the Midland area. And I had to sell to different people. And they were like, wow, you're doing such a good job and all that stuff. And at first I was nervous. I actually was. I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Right. But I ended up doing actually really really good that day and so I was like I can turn this into a business so that the kids rule now and everything else just put together made me want to start. So in that moment when you said I can do this what do you think changed? I think it was that people telling me hey you have a great sales pitch I'm gonna take you to my dealership you can help me sell cars you're like better than all my (laughs) other workers on all that stuff I was like wait so if I'm that good then I can have an impact on people because I normally just it's a connection with people that I try to have like a personal connection uh when we're at the sales and just in general life so I said hey I can add my personality into the business ethic and sales pitch and everything so I was like wait a minute if one plus one is two then I can do this you know you talked about your skills you talked about your personality why don't you share with us maybe some of the some of the things that you thought, you know, like maybe you were thinking one way and then you started thinking another way, right? When you got into when you got into the sales part of it, for instance, when you're talking about that. Like what was some of the I guess the word that comes to mind is preconceived notions that you had that maybe you thought, okay, I thought that was gonna work this way, but it actually works this way. 
Yeah. So that day, I'm not going to lie, I didn't think I was going to do too well because, like I said, I was nervous. So when I started doing really, really well, I was like, wow, you know. What do you credit when you talk about doing really well? What do you credit that to? You're saying like, so people who helped me do that? Either that or like, what was that? Did you find some confidence in you that you didn't have before? Did you find the right words to say? I think it was the confidence. I found some sort of confidence because at first, like I said, I had no confidence that I was going to be able to like do well because I wanted to touch people too. Um, but I didn't think I was going to be able to do it because, you know, hey, I'm just this little kid. But um, I ended up doing it and I, my con- my confidence level boosted. And that's why I have the business now. Nice. I know that Kids Rule Now has been working with Saginaw Valley State University. Now, were you in that program as well? With Kids Rule Now, yeah. Okay. So talk to us about your experience working at SVSU. Ms. Rhonda selected me and my sister for this program called the Vidal Fellows over at SVSU in the business department. Um, so it basically was like this huge boost to my business. It helped me come out with new merch and new just everything. It boosted my business. to It took it to the next level. Nice. And so it was really cool being able to do like a pitch presentation in front of everybody, which they really loved it. And we had a really good time with the Vidal Fellows, and I actually really missed them. <laughs> <laughs> For our audience, we're going to take a quick break to thank our sponsors. And when we come back, Jamal's going to tell us about that future project that he's keeping for the end of the show. We'll see you after the break. Are you enjoying these amazing stories? Michigan is full of people that are doing some pretty extraordinary things. If you want these amazing stories sent directly to your inbox, head over to TotalMichigan.com, enter your email address, and get them today. What are you going to get? I'm glad you asked. First, you're going to join our awesome Michigan community, and it is quite awesome. Second, you will get an email that includes the top five interviews from the show sent directly to your inbox. This is going to include the powerful lessons that we've learned from these amazing people. Third, you're going to get exclusive behind-the-scenes information about the show. There's a lot of things that are happening to grow this movement beyond the confines of just a radio show and a podcast. You'll get advance notice of upcoming guests and early access to their interviews. You'll also get a link to our Facebook group. Now to get all these goodies, just head over to TotalMichigan.com slash join. Enter your email address and join our awesome community today. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Total Michigan. I'm your host, Cliff Duvinois. Today, we're talking to the rather extraordinary Jamal Robbins, CEO of Juniors Collectibles. Now, Jamal, before the break, we were talking about your experience working with the Vidido Fellows, and I hope I said that correctly, yeah. uh, SVSU. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about what has happened since your experience with them? Well, um, I've been very blessed to receive a lot of offers to go speak to people, which is what I wanted to become or and still want to become, which is a motivational speaker. So nice. I've gotten offers to speak at Bavarian Inn and um, Boys and Girls Club and various other places. And I'm very excited to do it. Well, wow, that's absolutely wonderful. Has there been any other doors that have opened up for you because of that? Oh, I've gotten new merch styles, so not just the distressed look that I talked about earlier. Um, I've also gotten one that says Unstoppable and then like a line and then says every scar has a story on it. Not just new merchandise, but new logos and everything and an Instagram account. Oh, nice. And we'll have to delve into that when we get closer to the end of the show. What I would like to do is talk maybe about another. I see that you are also in a band. (laughs) Yes. You're quite the musician. Talk to us about, have you always had a love for music? How does that work? Yeah, I've like, since I was four, I've always had a love for music. I play, can I tell you the instruments that I play? Uh, Please do. (laughs) Okay. So I sing, um, I play piano, I play the drums, the ukulele, the guitar, the bass guitar, the the, the trumpet, the baritone, the tuba, and some other instruments that I forgot. (laughs) I kind of forgot. (laughs) Oh man. I love it. Yes. I played one instrument and I was lucky to do that. So you played (laughs) them all. Excellent. So what made you decide to pursue this? Cause I see that you got videos online posted. You got like an Mm -hmm. actual band that's going on there. You got all kinds. So what, why pursue this? Because since the kids were on our event, the first one that I went to, I 
I've had a passion for business since that age. And I really wanted to pursue this at not just in entrepreneurship wise, but um, also at SVSU, um, going there for like college and stuff and like have a minor in music or something. So ever since like my inspiration to have a business or become a young entrepreneur, that and music have been like tied for first place of like my most like the things that I really love to do. And, and it's not just become like a hobby or whatever, but like it's actually something that I that's like a dream for me. Or, you've actually gotten gigs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell some of the places that you've played. We've played at the Red House by the Temple Theater. I forgot what it was called, but the big Red House. And it was like some sort of club, not community club. I forgot what the name was. But yeah, it's like this red building by the Temple Theater. And a lot of bands and everything come to play um, like really cool music from jazz to like regular, like actual band, like orchestra stuff. So um, we've played there and various of other places. Because this has come up a few times during your talk between music and entrepreneur. And I'm just curious as well. Is there an entrepreneur out there that you admire? Miss Rhonda Alexia Whip. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I could just hear her laughing right now when she hears this episode. That's going to be cute. What is it? What is it about Rhonda that you that you truly admire? Her always having a smile on her face and always has this like warm embrace. She always tells me the nervous or you're not nervous but you're excited that whole thing and she just like the first time that I met her in 2017 I was like wow this lady is amazing like so it's just we've always had that like bond or whatever ever since so yeah she's like a really amazing person and she's the reason why I wanted to start this special thing again <laughs> yes. that we're going to talk about so later. let's talk about this Special thing. So yes. the question I got for you is, because I know this is off into the future, but tell us what the future holds. In the future, the very near future when I turn 18, so roughly around 2027, I want to start a nonprofit organization um, like Kids Rule Now. Like I said, Miss Rhonda is my inspiration to start it because I don't want people to just buy from me to be encouraged but I want this business to be able to grow so that I can support that nonprofit when I turn 18 because I want to be able to do it for free like not just people buying from me because I've always just wanted to be like hey like basically Oprah Winfrey hey you get this you can do anything except I'm motivating people and encouraging them to like be their best so the nonprofit will actually really help me do that um instead of just going to sales and stuff and selling stuff. So my business that I have now can support the nonprofit in the future, which is my plan. So what is the nonprofit? The nonprofit, I don't know what I'm going to name it. I'm still deciding that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the mission of the nonprofit? The mission to just encourage people, no matter what, tell people that they can do it. Go to like various different places, like around the country and hopefully around the world, um, to just spread the message that we are unstoppable and we can do anything. Because I know when you talk about inspiring people, and that's a very laudable goal, when you talk about inspiring people, what is it exactly do you want to inspire them to do? Like I said, be the best versions of themselves. Just try to be positive instead of looking at the negative things in life because there's always a bright side to, to a story. And some things happen to make greater things happen. You could, your car could break down, but next thing you know, hey, there's this car for sale for, that's very affordable. And now look, it's just basically in your hands. And hey, I have this new nicer car better than the other one. So sometimes things happen for a good reason. And so sometimes when bad things happen, people um, get down and sad, like I did when COVID happened. But I never knew that from there that a business would pop out of it and I would be able to encourage other people that they're unstoppable and that they can do it every single day. Even though I had to go through some things to come out and be like a better person and have um, the business so I can encourage other people, it just it's just wow, it's amazing because I'm able to do it now. So, yeah. Why don't you talk to us about some of the new merch that you've been working on? I know earlier that I mentioned about hoodies and hats and shirts. So I already had shirts before the Vitito, but the Vitito at the Innovation Lab 
with, I believe his name is John. I could be wrong. But anyways, we made hoodies that says every scar has a story underneath Unstoppable. Um, and those like all sold out at the event the pitch presentation that we had to do sweet they all sold out so i had to make some more so that you know i can sell them but that was amazing oh that's okay i was actually going to lead right into my next question that i had for you when you were talking about now talk about the innovation lab and part of the svsu and i missed this part before the innovation lab is where you can actually go and make products yeah Mm -hmm. so when you talk when we talk about making products is it like a one-off thing could you like run a hundred t-shirts could you do a thousand hoodies yeah i can i actually i can't remember how much i made i think i made 50 to 100 different like hoodies or shirts and so it's actually a really cool process so you have to if it's um a gray hoodie like how we had to do with the gray hoodies and shirts you have to put it in this like big red machine and then it like coats it with something and then you iron it and then you put the ink on there for the thing and then you iron it again and then bam there's a shirt i had the really cool opportunity with the video fellows to go to the innovation lab and make the products myself um and it was like a very fun experience so i can really just go there anytime but like i have to set up a date or something you know plan it out with him so yeah i can just go there and just make stuff for my business talk to us about the first time that you held up one of your shirts and you saw your logo on there. This is now your product. Talk to us about that. So when they came to my house and my mom showed me, I was like, whoa, that's, I'm going to be selling these. And I was like, wow. Was that good or was that bad? No, it was good. Um, I was like, wow, it's, this is actually like really happening. It was only like a dream some time ago, but it's like, wow, it's actually happening now. And it became a reality and you sold out. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> nice. So what does that tell you? That I can do it. This is just living proof that I can and that anybody can do whatever they put their, their minds to, which is what I was told the entire time before I had my business started. Little did I know that it was actually going to manifest that I could do anything um, I put my mind to. That's great, because that seems to be a recurring theme today for you to be able to do that. Nice. So with regards to the nonprofit. The question that I got for you is this, because having a nonprofit is tough. So why do the nonprofit? Why not just do speaking engagements right underneath of your company now? Why make a separate entity? I really don't know. I just, it's just something that was put on my heart to do. Just one day, it was just like an idea because how Miss Rhonda's Kids Rule Now really touched me. And it was like all just for free. It just was set in my hands and I could do whatever I wanted to do with it and be encouraged and everything. I was like, hey, I don't want to do this when people have to pay for it. I want to do it for free. Yeah, that's why I want to do the nonprofit because I don't want to take I wanted to do it with my business that I have now. I don't want to take like anything out of it. I don't want to earn any money. I don't want to do that. I'd rather get a job somewhere else. But I was like, wait a minute, this business could be funding another thing um, that I want to do for the nonprofit. And so I was like, hey, this is actually going to be a cool plan. It's actually going to work out. And so that's why I did that versus my other plan. Okay. Another question I got for you is circling back to the uh, to the speaking gigs, right? People saying, "Hey, we want you to come talk to us." Is it just doing your business presentation, or is it you inspiring people? It's me inspiring people, both really, but more of the inspiring people because people that showed up to the event and people that wasn't able to make it but heard about it, they were like, "Wow, this dude is like." He's he's encouraging people. He's doing this. He's telling us about Unstoppable. And so um, they wanted me to go to other places and tell them about Unstoppable. So I believe at the Bavarian Inn, it's going to be like a, a staff day. So like they relax, whatever. And I can encourage the staff to keep going and keep doing what they do um, and doing what they're what they really love. So it's like a mixture of both. And for your speaking engagement. So I asked this question because this is something that I'm getting into myself, but for your speaking engagement, do you have already an outline prepared of what you're going to say? I'm actually working on that right now. Cool. Anything you can share with us? I'm going to tell people about Unstoppable and every car and every scar has a story and what that means to me. And I've been coming up with an acronym for Unstoppable or either every scar has a story. Where did you get every scar has a story? Well, um, 
that was another thing that was just like on my heart. Every scar is a story because like I said, with the distress look, the distressness tells or it shows people that, hey, I've been through these things, but it says unstoppable because no matter what, I am unstoppable. And those scars tell stories. And yeah, so how we come out of those scars and how the scars can still be there, but it doesn't change you. You know what I'm saying? It just, it makes you better. Jamal, for our audience, if anybody's listening to this and they want to connect with you, they want to follow the excitement in the journey that you're on. And I know you mentioned Instagram before. Is there a website we can direct people to, social media? What's the best way for them to get in, to, to follow you? The best ways for them to follow me or get in contact with me is Facebook and Instagram. Instagram, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's at Juniors Collectibles. Um, or you can just look up my full name and hit the search button. Don't forget the search button because it won't work. But my full <laughs> name um, and then hit the search button and then it should be the first one up there. And it says Juniors Collectibles with my red hat for my logo. And then on Facebook, you can either just look up Juniors Collectibles or my full name. Awesome. Jamal, thank you for taking time to come and chat with us today. It's really great. There's a lot of great things. And I actually look forward to having you back on the show in the future so you can tell us how everything's unfolded. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> and for our audience, you can always go to TotalMichigan.com, click on Jamal's interview, and you will see all the links that he mentioned above. We'll see you next week with another exciting story. See you then.